Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effect the Chon. I just want to say happy Halloween. I just want to do a little fun one. Uh, we're going to model this pumpkin and create this scene from scratch, and we're going to cover every aspect of it. It's going to be a little longer, but a little more casual. And as I spent like six hours doing this and figuring things out and figuring out the best way and all this stuff, and you, you'll see as the video goes on, I start to slowly uh, lose my mind. Meow. Yes. And we we'll zoom out here. Meow, 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 meow. I love it. But also when that's happening, I also have found out the more I went, the more I just kind of had fun with it. <laughs> uh, happy little accident. I like the way that little tooth look. But sometimes it's just fun to go back to the roots and make just a fun little kitty cat pumpkin inspired by my daughter's three and a half year old pumpkin. That's not how that my three and a half year old daughter's kitty cat pumpkin. You can see how the video is going to go. So we're going to go ahead and do that and have fun along the way. And uh, bonus points to anyone who counts the number of times I say meow and make cat noises throughout this video. But yeah, we just had a good time. And, uh, and I want you to have fun, follow along, make a cute pumpkin your own, and uh, enjoy learning along the way. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started. We've got a backdrop, a camera, a normal dome light, and then just kind of a backlight pointed right here. Nothing too too fancy. Okay, so we're going to start off with a sphere. There's a lot of ways to model things. We're going to go ahead and change this to standard and probably shrink it down to like 40 centimeters. I don't know. We'll see. Raise that up. There we go. Like so. Not too shabby. And what we want to do is we want to lower down the segments. Like a lot. Like that. Like. 11 segments so we have these vertical lines that we want to split and create the gaps to create our fat pumpkins so in order to do this so basically what i'm going to do in this tutorial is it's going to be very boom 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 and you let me know i've i've i kept doing this tutorial and it was like an hour long if you want to know uh in-depth ways to model Definitely check out the Mind in Motion chapter on modeling, where we do a whole bunch of really fun different modeling, from landscapes to fun little cute shapes to low poly modeling, all that stuff. Um, definitely check that out. Uh, but what I was going to say is, like, let me know. I, I always go back and forth between whether for YouTube I need to do the quick boom, 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 and then have like the, but I like naturally I want to do the longer in depth stuff, but then I'm like, is that is YouTube the place for that? Or does that need to be like somewhere like Patreon or something that's like, okay, I want to talk to you about it actually and get the chance to like communicate with you. Cause on YouTube it's like just comments and stuff. It doesn't really feel very personal, but behind other things, it does feel more like one-on-one. -on -one. So let me know if you would rather have the long form stuff on YouTube and the short content you would pay for or vice versa. I don't know. Just let me know in the comments below. I always go back and forth on whether I should do what I should put on YouTube for you guys, whether it should be the short stuff or the long stuff. So let me know. But for this, because Halloween's very soon, we're going to do the short stuff. So here's going to be the boom, boom, boom. Let's get to it. We want to make all these vertical lines. The verticals, so we're going to make our sphere editable. We're going to grab that, go to our edge tool here, go to our ring selection and shift, 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 click, 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 click all of our vertical lines. And then we're going to right click, go to bevel and just bevel ever so slightly like so. And then we're going to go to our faces and we want to make all of our fat parts come out rather than sucking in our little parts. I also meant to, when I had those selected, there we go. Uh, redo that actually. Boop. I want to have these. Okay. All right. Then I want to grab our faces. So we're going to hold control and click faces. And that's going to select all of our new faces that we just created. And rather than suck in those parts, I want to push out all the other parts because it just is going to work better. You get less overlapping and stuff when you do that. So what I want to do is just actually hit UI to invert my selection and then right click and choose bevel and just we're going to bevel ever so slightly and actually find it pretty easy to when you get to this point, just throw in the subdivision surface on top of it and then go back a layer to the actual sphere, turn off all the lines so you, you know it's not in your face, but you still get to see the final result. So you have your original lines you're editing here and we go zoom, and we can see kind of how that's going to look. And I kind of found that what I like is when I go to bevel, bevel, uh, I like an offset of like 1.3 ish and an extrusion of like five or six. 
a pretty fat extrusion. And uh, that's going to give us kind of these nice gaps here, but still kind of a nice natural pumpkin-y vibe, which I enjoy. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and go to our polygon points here. And I want to go into my side view, and I want to select all the tops of this. So I'm going to go to rectangle selection, select all of these, and I'm just going to hit E and pull those down a bit, and then hit T, and come out here, whoops, and scale them out a bit, just to kind of smooth those out a little bit. There we go. So now we're going to have this nice kind of flatter pumpkin top, which is fine. I like the way this is looking. Not too bad. You can play around with the uh, things there. You can make it fatter, thinner, whatever. No big deal. And so now we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and cut our pumpkin open. So what I want to do now is shift click both of these, right click and go to connect objects. And then I want to make a basically a null. And this is going to be my like base things. And what I want to do is I want to turn this off. And anything that I create that I don't want to destroy, I'm going to grab and just shove it in there. So it's going to turn it off so we don't see it in the viewport anymore. We only see our new meshes. But we still have them in case we're like, you know what? I actually wish that this puffed out a little bit more. We could go back if we want to. And it's all going to be here underneath this base. Whoop. Okay, so we've got this. This is our pumpy pumpkin. And what we can do is just cut out faces and stuff on this. Or maybe we want to play around with the deformer on this. So... Let's go ahead and grab this and do a bulge. Hold shift, let down bulge, go to fit to parent and bulge it up. Now, I don't love that, but maybe if we put a fillet on it. Mm, ooh, gourd, gorgeous. So what we're gonna do is we can increase the strength of this a bit, but what I wanna do is maybe not fill it, but maybe I want to just grab this bulge and pull it down. So we're really only like getting like a fatter bottom. God, the things I'm saying, pumpkins. Okay, and then I wanted to I hit T and I made it a little bit taller because I want it to be kind of like a smoother taper up. Like so. Not too shabby. Maybe we scale it in just a bit. Actually not scale it in, decrease the strength of it. So it's just kind of a more natural pumpkin shape. It's not like perfectly symmetrical like our sphere was. And you also can play around with it. If you don't want to use a bulge, you can use something like an FFD. It's a very good one to do. Uh, and just grab those points and move them around. So it'd be like, okay, these points, we're just going to make this bit of the pumpkin a little down here. We'll go to this brush tool. We'll select these, pull them down. Maybe just grab this one, pull it kind of out. We'll grab this one in the middle here, pull it out. This one over here, we'll push it in and back. So, you know, we just kind of get a more natural kind of pumpkin look. Pick this one down a little. And we're just kind of organically moving this around. Like so. We can fatten up the bottom ones all together here. Like so. Pull this out. And yeah. So there we go. So now we kind of have like this more organic pumpkin. You want to take a look at it. You want to make sure you didn't get too crazy with it. So we kind of have a more organic look. I don't like that though, so we're not gonna use that. But <laughs> there we go. Uh, but here's here's something cool you can do in case you didn't know this. Um, basically, let's take this cool pumpy shape that we have here and let's go ahead and hold the shift and put it in a twist and put a twist in it, fit to parent and twist it up. I just think that's like a fun shape that I wanna use in something else. So what I can do is open up the asset browser and just shift click both of these things and go right click and connect objects. And this is gonna be like our twist twist because maybe you're like oh actually this would be a good christmas ornament decoration or something um spell your words right twist and literally just clear out your asset browser and drag and drop that in there put it in whatever folder you want uncategorized is fine boom and now whenever you need this object you can grab it it's going to be there just like that this is how you can do a lot of shapes all this stuff so pretty cool so if you like get to a project later or if you want to open up another project that you're working on, like this square pumpkin I made, and bring in this twist, you just simply drag and drop it in, and there it is. Pretty cool. Okay, a lot of people don't know, a lot of people don't use the asset browser enough. It's one of the best things about C4D, and it's kind of underutilized. Okay, so back to our pumpy. Without the twist, we just want that bulge, you know? See, it's going to give me a counter for how many times I say bulge this video. All right, um, let's go ahead and do the eyes now. So I'm going to cut it out. You got to decide, do you want to do it with the bool? Do you want to do it with the volume builder, volume measure? I don't 
the volume builder has so many issues sometimes it's probably going to be the easiest way but the bool is also a pretty easy way to do it as well so we'll see but first things first is we need to make our shapes so what i want to do first is create my triangles for the eyes now originally i made these with cylinders lower these sides down to three and then you know just cut them in but what ended up happening is i wanted to bevel these a little bit more and beveling a cylinder just isn't always the easiest thing to do oops so what i wanted to do is actually instead of just doing it like that i used a inside spline lower the size down to three change this down to like i don't know eight how small is that let's see pull that forward um probably bigger than that let's do 12. So with 12, yeah, there we go, maybe 10. Yeah, and then we can do some rounding on it. Obviously that's too much rounding because now it's a circle, but now we can have like kind of a more, more like organic looking rounded eye, which looks nice. Maybe that's too much, 0.5. Yeah, okay, and then that, we throw that into a extrude, boop, there we go. And so now we can, you know, take a look at our lines here. We still don't have a lot of geometry on this. So with this, what we could do is, probably just throw it in a remesher honestly just toss it in a remesher it looks like doo-doo so how do we fix that well go back to our extrude go to the caps and round it off there we go round up the size there and then on the object itself we want to subdivide it along the edges there like so uh what we're going to do now then what we can do is select all of our lines and hit u shift S, and we're just going to subdivide it twice without actually changing the way it looks at all. Okay, so now we've got one eye here. We're going to go ahead and use our placement tool and slap it on there. And you're like, oh my gosh, did you not notice that you made it that long? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm going to squish it down. It's fine. It's just using it to cut it out. So we're going to go back to the placement tool and we want to place it on the Z. There we go. And the reason I'm doing that is because I kind of like when the eye holes kind of go towards the center of the object versus like cutting out a straight triangle and going like boom, straight into it. Uh, so I think this is going to make it look a little more whoops, natural and organic. There we go. Cool. And we'll just shove that in there like so. Hold control, click it, drag it over, rotate it around if we want. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want it to be kind of close. Shove it in there. <laughs> can have a little derpy pumpkin, maybe make one eye like a little bit bigger. I kind of like that, the idea of that. Yeah. Okay, looking good. Uh, for the sake of example, we'll toss in a material on our pumpkin. Let's make another material and just make it black. And these will be our eyes just for now. We're not actually going to do it this way, but just for the sake of, <laughs> of for fun, really. Okay, so now we've got that. And then for the nose, what I want to do is hit E and copy control to click and drag, bring it down and rotate it so it's facing us, but then rotate it upside down. <gasps> Oh my gosh, if you scale it in this way, look at that, a kitty cat nose. And what we can do, hit W, uh, E, let's see, there we go. And rotate that round a little bit, hit T, W, and scale it out a little wider, like so. Nice, kitty cat nose. Cool. Neat, I like that. We could do one that's like a little cuter, you know, maybe not so triangly. But for the sake of keeping it jack o lantern y, we're going to do triangly. Okay, so now we want to talk about how to make its mouth. Now, I thought about this earlier how to make like the, the cheeks and stuff and do like a little mouth. Um, I Googled cartoon cat, which an image searched it. Don't do. Apparently, that's a horror game and it is not going to be helpful. Uh, so what we're going to do is I was clicking in here at the splines and I looked at this and I was like, if I look at that upside down, that kind of looks like a kitty cat cheek. So we're going to use this and we're going to solo that with the solo button here. And we're going to make it way smaller, obviously, Weep, like so. And you can see, you can see it, can't you? You rotate it over. Huh? Pull it up. Weep. It looks like a little kitty cat face, right? Okay, so, but then we need to combine that with a circle. And well, how long is that going to be? Like this. Like so. And let's say I want it to be just like a little bigger. And so now what we're doing is we want to combine these two shapes together. 
in a unique way like like this uh so and i'll show you here what i mean in a second if we come in here and basically instead of like a bool it's like a spline bool and it's called a spline mask we take that and we drop the circle in and then the cissoid in there and that's a weird way to do it so we flip that around and it doesn't matter which order it goes in does it okay yeah so we go into our spline mask and instead of union, we do and, and voila, indeed. So now if we move our circle, you can see kind of how we, we're drawing that, uh, like that, like a little cat mouth, uh, like so, boom. So we still adjust both of these. We want these to be kind of longer. I don't fully understand what the hell is happening. Um, with this shape, this sissoid, it makes it, it's crazy to me. Anywho, I will do it like that. Yep. And then spline circle, cool. And on, and then we grab this circle and we move it down. We can kind of have it be a little like that. Maybe we can stretch it out. So it's like less. Edit the circle. So it's like editable. Right, and then we can stretch it out like this way. Then put that in the spline. So now we can have a mouth like that. Okay, weird shape, I know, and it's away from the center point. It's fine, we're gonna move both of these down closer to the middle here, this is important. When it comes to modeling, there we go. And we're gonna hit C, make it editable because we're crazy and we don't wanna go backwards. Actually, that's we are crazy, we're not doing that, that's stupid. We're gonna hold uh, control and copy that and we're going to take this bit and put it into the base so it goes away. And then we're going to see on this one. So if we ever need to go back to it, we still have it down here. Totally fine. Okay, so now with this selected, we can go ahead and make this an extrusion. So hold Alt, hit it down the extrude. There we go. So we have this nice little kitty cat mouth shape. I don't love the way that this is looking. So I want to basically rebuild it. And the easiest way to rebuild this kind of a shape would be in the volume builder. Take it really down real low, like 0.25. Whoop. And then we're going to add a dilate in a road and do like one on here. There we go. And then maybe do a smooth to kind of suck it back down. There we go. We could take that down like probably 50%, not too shabby. And then that goes into the volume measure. There we go. Cool. So now we've got a kind of a nicer shape. And again, we can change that erode. Maybe take it back to like 0.5. It's pretty, pretty subtle. Here we go. We can also adjust the strength of it if you think it's changing the shape of your object too much. There we go. But now we have that and we can go ahead and hit C. And now it's like crazy high poly and all this stuff and we don't need that. So it's not really that big a deal. But we're going to call this mouth and we're just going to leave it be for now. And this is the nose and again the eye and the eye. Okay. One. You thought I was going to name it the same thing and you were all going to unsubscribe. Okay. Here we go. So we got our mouth now. Let's bring our mouth up to speed with the rest of our objects here. Whoop. Whoop. And the mouth feels weird, right? So we want to rotate our pumpy because we want to cut the mouth right into the middle of one of these good chunky chunks. And uh, if you don't know what I'm saying, it's because it's like midnight and I've done this tutorial for the last five hours. I think I'd spent six hours on this today and it kept being too long. So again, harping back to that. And then again, we're going to cut it kind of like this. So it's kind of aiming back in there. So yeah, in theory, this should look kitty catty, right? This is the mouth. Meow. Yeah, it helps to make the noises. Uh, we can spread that out if we want to. That'll kind of give us a little more cheeky cheek. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just make it bigger too. And then take the nose, make it smaller. The nose is too big. Okay. And bring the eyes over a bit. And I like I like the derpy eyes like that. I think that looks that looks pretty fun. Maybe this one needs to be bigger. Too big. Smaller. Maybe too too mangy of a cat that way there we go that looks pretty good all right so now what we can do is we could probably build this with the volume builder pretty easy so we'll go ahead and create a volume builder and we're going to grab all of these and just group them real quick right click and group 
These are our face bits. And we're gonna put those in the volume builder and we're gonna put our pumpy in the volume builder. And we're going to make sure that pumpy subtracts face. And we're gonna make sure this is slow, like 0.2. Perfect, except it's the opposite of what we want. We want the face to subtract the pumpy. There we go. Meow. Nice. Cool, so now we can use erode and dilate and kind of grow our stuff back out. 0.2 might be too small. It's really lagging a bit, isn't it? That's right, we can change it to like one. Yeah, there we go. Don't worry if it's not perfect right off the rip um, because we can fix it. We can do a small, small little offset here and then smooth on top of that. We'll do the dilate there. Oh no, pumpkins become sad. Turn the smooth off. Smooth is stupid. All right, crank this up. Offset that a little some more. Fat pumpkin. I kind of like a fat, a fat, a fatty. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. All right, we've got that going on. We'll smooth that and lower the smooth down to like stupid percent five. And what we're going to do now is put it in a measure. Oh, yeah. We've lost all detail. So how do we bring that back? We'll turn smooth off for one. It's pretty stupid. Uh, and we're going to go to the dilate and lower that strength down. But now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Smooth back on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the cool thing about this is we built it in a way that allows us to fix it if we don't like the way things are positioned. And we can. So let's look at this. Uh, for this eye, turn it up bigger and rotate it. No, touch the nose. Bad kitty. <laughs> Maybe I should do all my tutorials when I'm sleep deprived and tired. I like that. That looks good. Should we do some whiskies? Whiskers? Oh my gosh, I'm losing it. I like this. This is looking good. The top of the pumpkin looks a little janky right now, but we'll we'll smooth that out later. We'll smooth that boy out. I like this. Okay. Do we want to add the teeth in here? Yes. Grab an eye. Actually, yeah, grab an eye. Copy and put it here on top. Okay, and we're going to make this eye much smaller. And we're going to bring it down here. And we're going to use it as a tooth. So we're going to rotate that like so. And push it back so it's like in the mouth. Get in there. My brain. Way in there. There you go. There you go. Get in there. Orient yourself a little better. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Now we make it you know, go kind of point down and hit T. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Wow. And then over here, copy that control. Whoa. I just want this axis. Stop it. Stop it. Full control. Just like that. Pull it up a bit and go back to this. Eye and pull it back up and pull it backwards because it's not really an eye anymore, it's not a tooth. So we should relabel that, pull it back into our shape. Meow. Meow. I like it, but we're touching the, the bottom here. Don't do that. Get out of there. Come on. There we go. Meow. I don't mind it. It, it kind of looked like a natural kind of pumpkin. Like, whoops, you didn't cut it through all the way, but it also looks like a glitch. So I don't love it. Okay, turn it back up. Back in here, put the smooth back on top of everything else. Very nice. And again, maybe do like 0.8. It's going to recalculate, but I think things will look a little nicer. There we go. And we got this eye. We got to pull it back again. I just like how this one's like, yeah, I want it to be kind of behind. A little snaggle tooth. <laughs> it's because it's in the little nook there, the dividey part, which is fine. Actually, that makes a good point. We should pull it back far enough that it is. In the little nook. Yeah. But not that far. And we're going to call this tooth. And this is the other tooth. This tooth two. Perfect. And we zoom out here. Meow, 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 meow. 
Oh my gosh. It's, that tooth is in the wrong spot, but I like this. Slide it over. That's too much tooth. Slide it back. Good amount of tooth. Not too much tooth. Slide it back over. That's it. But then push it forward. This is the worst spot where you can see it, but you can't grab it. Yeah. This is a smidge now. Maybe I just need to rotate it in. Just, to, just tilt it in just a little. Yeah. Like, and then pull it up because we're touching the bottom there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Happy little accident. I like the way that little tooth look. Rotate that down. Skibbity bop. There we go. Back that up. Meow, meow. Perfect. Yeah, little kitties. Okay, now we can do. Do we do? Do we want to put whiskers in this? Okay. First off, I want to take the eyes. And I'm going to set them back in there further. I'm going to hit T. And I want to scale them this way. So just make it deeper, deep, deeper impacts into our pumpkin. Scale them the wrong way. I want to just scale them on the Z. Thank you. And one is jumping forward and one is jumping backwards. Very cool. Uh, we're just going to move them together back into the pumpkin. Oh, my God. So I want to make my eyes a little deeper. So we're just going to come up to the top view here and suck my eyes into my head a little bit more Meow. there we go cool i like that seriously the cat noises are just they're just coming out okay neat i like you uh let's go ahead and again take our tooth and actually no let's take an eye and copy paste put that back in here we're going to now call this ear and we're going to move it up here Meow. and make your cat noises as you build please and come up and rotate. Meow. Hit T, scale it up. Meow. Actually, you don't need to scale it. But you want to make sure you're not making it look like a pumpkin. A pumpkin. A pig. You don't want it to look like a pumpkin. What am I even saying? Thanks for watching at this point. If you're still just learning, hopefully, or just listening to the ramblings of a mad man. You know, let me know. Let me know if you like this off-the-cuff kind of Lucy goosey tut hey back in there you go i'm just having fun you know having a good time ear no ear <laughs> like here it's bad it's bad um rotate this up see now he's trying to record youtuber okay there we go whoa hey no yeah, maybe huh Okay, so now do we get crazy, right? We've got ear, ear, right here. Okay, and all this needs to go underneath the smooth. Um, but inside of these ears, we could take these two ears, copy pasta, put them back in. And with these, inside of here, these ears is minus ears. And these ears is smaller. But come forward. Um, yeah, we need to do them like individually. Uh, let's see, slide it over. So they're like cutouts of an ear, you know? Scale it down. Do we like that? Or is that silly? Is that too fancy? I kind of like it. Answer my own question. I don't care. I like it. All right, we're going to go in down here. Oop, oop, oop. Oh, yeah, maybe that's the answer. Just more. No, oh, no, I, I like the. And then but pull it forward more so there's less. W for the world of space. Less deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less deep. W. 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 Like that. It's more, more, too much. No. No, that's good. No more. 
<laughs> yeah. Dude, this one's just not. Yeah, like that. No, further back. More than that. T, scale it down. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Scale it back up. All right. After fiddle farting with it some more, I ended up just like imprinting the ear inside of there. And maybe we can add like a, oops, right click 0.5 centimeter bevel there. Mm hmm. I like that. So I don't like how tight ear number one over here is. Let's pull it back. I want it to be a little more indented in there. I don't know if part of that's the lighting, but that looks that looks better. And I think I want ear two to not be that far in. Part of it's the fact that I can't tell what the hell is going on from this top view. That's it. Nice. And then ear one over here just needs to go up and over ever so slightly. Kind of make it more of a oh baby. Meow. Meow. That's right. Okay, cool. I like ye that. Cool. So this is our pumpkin now. And we can decide whether we want to add. We're going to go ahead and copy paste. Drag. Copy that in there. Okay. Done. Locked it in. Hit save because it's a lot of pumpkin. And um, though it already exists. Oh, save. Pumpkin 2. Okay. So we've got our kitty cat pumpkin here. I don't love the top. We'll make a little stem for him. We'll just go with a cylinder, pull it down. Obviously, make it way smaller, like um, 25, and then 20, and we'll pull it up. Oop. Too fat. Bring it down, like so. Yep, cap it, fill it. I definitely want to fill it on that, like so. A little tinier up and we're gonna make sure we have some segments across the height here maybe just a little bit more oops like oh not that that's crazy 24 there we go and we'll take that and we'll put that bend modifier inside of that not on top of that if it's apparent and bend that bad boy but keep the length don't stretch it out bend it a little and then but now we just take the whole thing Pull it in. Yeah. Oh. Rotate it. It's too like per. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Like that. Mm hmm. That's it. Okay, cool. Down a little more. I want it stumpy. Stumpy stump. Cool. I'm not quite happy with the way this is looking. So now let's. Let's texture it. So we got this saved. So we can go ahead and hit C on this, which makes it one object. And with this crazy, insane object, we can come in here and try to remesh it and see if that'll clean it up at all. Hey, that's way cleaner. Um, and we still have our nice kitty cat shape. Cool. So now we hit C again. And now we have our pumpkin one more time. Pumpkins. I typed a W in there. It's fine. But now we can connect these two shapes if we want, but we really don't even have to. What we can do now is just finally start shading this bad boy. Create a new material. Uh, open that up. If you don't have all this stuff, I'll show you how to do that in the Mind in Motion Workshop week one. Uh, but basically, you go to create or just double click in here and that'll open up the node editor. But you want to make sure you're in the new settings. If you're in the old shader view, convert it to the new. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and make this orange. Like so. Perfect. And we'll toss this on our pumpkin. Ooh, boy. That's not the orange we want. Ugly. Ugly. Better. Oranger. Nice. All right. And then uh, you can decide, you know, do you want it to be kind of stylized? Do you want it to be rough? Do you want it to be shiny? Do you want it to be metallic? Which, probably not. So let's do like 1.2 and then a roughness of like point. Two five. I don't mind a little shine on it. I think that looks kind of fun. I also think we could come down here to the coat and do a little coat on there because pumpkins kind of have a little shine on them. Which I don't mind. One point six on that. Point seven ish. 
I'm gonna do like 0 0.1 on this roughness there. Cool. Nice little cute pumpkin. And we could also come in here and just grab a max on noise. Or you could come in here to the asset browser. Probably the best thing to do would go to media, type in imperfect imperfections. No? Okay, we'll grab like this grungy tile dirt. And we'll toss that on to the shape here. And we'll go down to the coat and we'll put that in the coat roughness. And that's just going to add like a little layer, like that filmic layer on top of the pumpkins that that has. Just give it a little bit of realism to it. And you can adjust that. Um, basically, just grab a ramp and say, okay, toss it in there instead. Be libby libu. And now you can adjust it with this ramp. And you say, actually, uh, I want there to be a lot more shiny parts. Drag that up. Cool. Like that. Bang, bong, boom. And you can solo this. You can see how it's being applied. Like so. That's really not too bad. We could also probably take this white part and double click that and make it like gray. So it's not like totally blocking it out. And uh, slide this up a bit as well. Yeah, bring this down. I want some variance there. There we go. Cool. So wherever it's going to be white, it's going to be, you know, less shiny and vice versa. And you can try that on whatever. You can put that on the bump map if you want. Well, that just got pretty good looking, I'm not going to lie. Uh, maybe we'll bypass the noise map and go straight into the bump map so it's like slightly different um, and less contrasty. Yeah. We also could layer some stuff in there, but I'm not hating that, to be honest with you. Um, we also could just copy this, take it, and rotate it like, I don't know, 45 degrees so it's not identical to the one we have. Plug that in. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Nice. Cool little pumpkin. Okay, cool. So now what we could do is with our pumpkin, we've got a couple options. If you want to hollow it out completely, or you can leave it with these little cutout bits. Um, but let's let's hollow this bad boy out. We'll just grab a sphere and slide it down boom, 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 move it up so it covers up all of our holes here like so t scale it up meow, meow, meow. likey likey there we go hear me out maybe we don't even need to hollow this bad boy out maybe we make a new material go into that go down to emission crank that up to like 10 okay we put on a spooky glow glowy tint yeah okay Take that, we put that on the sphere. I love it. I didn't think I was gonna, I, you know, I did this tutorial a million times. I ended up just winging it kind of, not really, but you know what I'm saying. I, <laughs> I don't know. I watched Beetlejuice the other day. It's funny. I need to see the new one. Let me know if you liked it. But yeah, so check this out. This is cool. So obviously we don't have a light in there, so we can't like control it. Um, you know, but we can come in here and do the settings and we can come here to bloom and turn that on and whoa, hey, whoa. now we got that. We can go here and whoa. now we go. Tensity. Yeah. I'm quite happy with that. And if you want, you think that's like too uniform a light, right? So let's go ahead and just use a ramp and we'll copy that color that I used copy and paste that here in the white post okay and we're going to plug that in to the emission color and that has given us a very nice little ramp but maybe we flip this Whoop. oh yeah Slide this down. Okay, just make this like um, dark orange. There we go. Slide this down a bit. Got a nice little variance there. I'm happy with that. Turn that down a bit more. Slide it down. More. Sorry. We've lost our gradient there. I'm going to bring it back up. Oop. There it is. There it is. So it's like brighter in the mouth and the eyes. Ever so slightly. I like that. 
I like that. Cool. So that's one way to do it. You can do it lots of different ways. I quite like that way, though. It looks like we cut it open, doesn't it? Trippy. Uh, the other thing we can do now, if you wanted to, you could play around with, like, subsurface scattering and maybe do, like, a little bit of just, like, the, the edge of it being a little, like, pinker. But really, that's just going to jack up your render time more than you need to because we'll probably just cover that with bloom anyway because we love bloom. Cool. And so now we're going to grab this, copy, paste, control, click, and drag. And we're going to go to the colors here, and we are going to choose the, like, nasty brown. Perfect. Nice poo-poo color. And grab that. Throw that on the stump here. Bingo, bongo. And maybe our stump is just... Our stuff's just too clean, right? It's too boring. We did all that modeling and stuff, and then we just slapped a cylinder on there. Let's edit that. Okay, we've got our cylinder, our stump here. What I'm going to do with that is just throw it in a displacer. And we're going to go to shading, click, and noise. Just kind of break it up, make it a little less crazy, but we are going to suck it in like just a little bit like so. And then I'll also change this to like turbulence and scale it down a bit and toss that in a center surface. Mm, it's just the fact that it's shiny. Does it have a, a sheen in our coat there? Oh, yeah, take the coat off of that. Bam, there we go. Nope. That's better. Yeah, cool. Don't love it. I don't think I got lazy with this part, but it's just too fat, right? Can I say that? It's just slide that in. Boop, boop. That's that's fine, right? Only with that easy in real life. And now our displacement's probably too strong, so we'll lower that. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Meow. Perfect. Okay. Oh my gosh. We're good. Now we can dress out our scene with a little extra stuff. Let's go ahead and just finish this out with a nice little like grass maybe uh so we'll take our psych wall color that we have here and let's do like a moony purpley kind of dark purple yeah like that oh i like that okay and we're gonna add a landscape make it like five centimeters tall and change the seed and the scale like so and then take it and just shove it into the ground and maybe it's just, yeah, I think five was probably, six is probably good. So raise that up a bit like that. Uh-huh. Cool. And that is going to be our grass. So we'll grab the pumpkin material and just change it to green. Click that on there. Boop. And uh, take some of the coat. And, well, take the bump off the coat on that off. Want it to be kind of shiny. Yeah, cool. All right, so now I want to add some grass in here. So you're going to type in C-O-C-K. I know it's, it's, I don't know, they don't have the, if I type in grass, does it pop up? It doesn't, like, it, there it is, okay. So yes, it does, okay. Uh, we'll grab the middle-aged grass and pull it down here, boop, like so. And we want to get rid of all this stuff. We just want the full one. Bingo bongo. And we've got our ground material. We're going to make a copy of that. Hold control. We're going to call it grass. Okay. And we're going to hold alt and replace all of these with that. Boop. So now we just have like this little cartoon grass. We can hit shift and rotate it 90 degrees. Hit T, scale it up a little bit. Maybe make it a little taller. Like so. We can also play around with it, making it fatter. Like that. And then we can. Throw a wind deformer on there, hold shift, bloop, and lower the size of that down until you start getting it kind of going crazy. And that's obviously too strong. We just want it to be like a little crazy, like that. Okay. 
And then we got that, we can go over here and do the scatter pin tool and turn the object spacing down, the count up, and um, adjust the boundings of the rotation range, like five, five, and then a bunch here. And the size, we can do some small and some bigger. And what we can do is just go, brrr, just click and hold, and not across our cat, click and hold here across our ground. We can go around our kitty cat here and just around the back. And we're just kind of loosely drawing this on here. You know, just kind of get a naturally kind of feel without doing like a cloner. And we can grab that now and just hit E and pull that down into the ground. And it gives us kind of this natural kind of patchy grass cartoony look. And I kind of like that. That's like blending into the ground. Wow. And now we can come in here and maybe make this a little lighter. Or maybe we make it dark. No, uh, we don't do that. And what we do is we make it shinier for one. And then we make it a little see-through. Um, we can probably just do transmission, but we'll do subsurface for fun. Green. And then crank that up. And we'll make this like a light green, kind of yellowy green. And we'll say like five. And we'll grab another light and do a target tag on that. Bing, bong, boom. Up. Forward. Wow. Make that slightly blue. I like that. Let's make a tombstone real quick. Boop. Um, I don't know, 100 by 200 by 20, 20, sure. Um, do some, um, we just need one line there. There we go. And we're going to hit C and go ahead and go to the FFD on that bad boy. And we are going to just take that. There we go. Grab our top three here and pull that up very nice. And then throw that in the scissors and surface. Boop. There we go. And make that three. Cool. Tombstone. And we'll go ahead and grab that. Bing, bong, boom. Make that gray. Toss that on there. Boop. Get that back out of the way. Kind of back behind it, maybe. It's kind of like that. Kind of crooked. All right. And drive back in here. I don't hate that. And then we just take our camera and we go to optical, the field, click our pumpkin, turn on bokeh and set it to like, I don't know, 2.4. Cause we have a nice long lens. And do we put, I don't think it needs whiskers. <laughs> All right. So, all right, that's looking really nice. I made some whiskers. I don't know that I love them because they're like, they glow. Which I like. They also don't make sense that they glow, but they also do. They look like they're like, maybe I just need to like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, we'll do one without. Okay. Cool, we'll wrap this up with some LUTs on here. We'll go to turn on the LUTs. We'll go to Spooky. What's the spookiest LUT? It is the Filmic Medium High Contrast LUT. Boop, turn that on. Pretty good. And go to Colors, turn that on. A little more contrast, a little lower, a little higher. Spooky. And uh, yeah, bring that, bring that down a bit. I should decrease this light. Boop the front light which is this one oh yeah way lower like that cool maybe like three but more blue yeah Iris. 
Yeah, I like that. Cool. There we go. Let's make it not a square. Spooky. Now we got to redo our clickety clack on there. All right. Group. Group. All right, so this is our pumpkin. All right, so we made it kind of widescreen and we, we put a little tombstone uh, back here, decorated a little bit. And what I want to do is just right click or group them together. I want to put this in here as well. Cool, pumpkin. Control click, drag, T, scale it all down like a little bitty kitty cat. Meow. Maybe he's hiding back here. Yeah. Like that, like a little baby one back there. I like that. And just adjust that focal length. Maybe we'll do like 2.4. to Kind of blur out the background a little bit more. Maybe we can make sure we click and select our face. And if you think your pumpkin looks a little too different, you can always play around with the, um, the shine and stuff of this in the roughness map. But one thing you may notice is whenever you use the volume builder, all your stuff can come out with these weird little extra lines on them. Especially if you put something on it that's like super shiny like if you put pure metal on this you'll really see kind of how it has like some segments like it doesn't look smooth when it should so what we need to do with our pumpkin here is we can grab this and we can we can just grab our pumpkin shape here and just hold shift and let go on smoothing and just kind of bring that down a bit and that's just going to smooth that out like 20 percent and that'll smooth out some of those weird edges for us to give us kind of a, a smoother shape. So if you notice anything weird, you can always throw a smoothing on there and that should normally fix any of those weird fung tags. Or you go back to the fung tag and crank it up all the way and that might be that might fix some of those issues as well. But yeah, there we go. Boop. Nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for playing along. Meow meow. Well. Thanks for watching and happy Halloween.